Dave, welcome. Um, so, in a way, I'm putting this blue bracket acquisition in the same bucket as this concern about the data that gets fed into AI systems and is it disclosing things that companies don't want disclosed when data is flowing and you're looking for advantage, sometimes that can go wrong, right? Yeah, hey John, good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, those things are definitely interconnected. You know, what, what Blue Bracket is, is a technology that is in the, in the market for sequence detection. Think about when an application is being built uh, a developer most often will hard code the username and password combination into that application, whether that's for an AI-oriented application or whether that's just a generic application. And so discovering where those secrets live inside your organization is a huge concern for every big company. It's a pretty well understood market. And uh, it's actually a very logical adjacency to our, our, our Vault product, which is a secrets management uh, product that is very, very broadly used. And so we're excited about the addition. So yes, you know, I think for whether it's a, an application built by a developer or an, an AI-oriented application, you know, this tends to happen. It's sort of an older model of programming to hard credentials, and I think that this stands to reason that you know AI-oriented applications are probably going to bias this model, and uh, so it will certainly uh, drive demand for for detection of them. What's the theory of why now is the important time to do an acquisition like this? You are watching the bottom line closely. Valuations in certain startups have been high, but at the same time, I keep hearing uh, from startup CEOs uh, in, in software that purchasers, CFOs, CIOs, don't want to have to buy a whole bunch of stuff. They're looking to consolidate vendors. Correct. Yeah, I think there's, a, there's really probably two or three things at play here. The first of those is we have a very long-term time horizon in terms of the, the value creation opportunity that we have as a company. You know, our customers want us to play this role of sort of interacting between the different cloud providers in a consistent way. And, and so, you know, when you, when you take that position in the market, you have to have a very long time horizon. Number two, you know, we're extraordinarily well capitalized. We have north of, you know, billion dollars in our back feed uh, and, our, and no debt. And so we're in a really logical position to say, you know, irrespective of the cycles that sort of come and go, how do we best build the company for that longer arc? And, and then the third element is, is really yeah, what you alluded to, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, venture funded IP out there in the local ecosystem that perhaps is seeing a different fundraising environment than uh, they may have expected, you know, a couple of years ago. And I think, you know, the next 6, 12, 18 months is going to be a really interesting time for our ecosystem because, you know, a lot of those companies that were funded at really, really large valuations are, you know, just have a different market they're encountering. So I think, you know, you will continue to look around at interesting things. There's always interesting IP out there. And I think if you take that long term view, it's the responsible thing to do. So irrespective of the near term, you know, we need to keep building the, the, the most valuable business that we can.